This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and healthful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org. Everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the Castle Medical Center Wellness and Lifestyle Medicine Center. That's a mouthful, isn't it? How many for how many of you is it your first time here? <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're gonna have to have some more of these raw food cooking uncooking, <laughs> right? It's very intriguing, isn't it? I'm I'm anxious myself to try the food. Jennifer Flynn is a graduate of the Living Light Culinary Arts Institute of Northern California. There she obtained her certification as a raw food <coughs> chef and instructor. She is also the author of The Natural Palate, A Simple Guide to Vegan and Wheat-Free Cuisine. Now, this is a, very, a lot of people have wheat allergies, so if, if this is something that you're dealing with, you might be very interested in this. Jennifer became a vegetarian almost 15 years ago, making the transition to a vegan diet a few years later and finally going 100% raw in 2005. Her passion for healthy living through diet and exercise, combined with their culinary education, has inspired her to share the tremendous benefits of raw cuisine with others. Jennifer is offering a variety of classes, and she's also available for either group or private instruction. So how about that? Have a raw foods cooking class at your house. Her goal is to continue educating people on the simplicity and decadence of raw cuisine so that they are empowered to make a choice between conventional fast foods and the fast food that is so readily given to us by nature. So without further ado, let me present Jennifer Flynn. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. I have to tell you, this is the biggest class I've ever instructed. Usually my classes are between 20 and 30 people, and I do a lot of private classes. So... 85 people, wow. I mean, I'm so excited that so many people are so interested in learning more about raw food and how simple it is. That's what I want to show you, how simple it is. I'm going to be making five things, five items, the first of which is going to be a cream of buckwheat cereal. Now, buckwheat is actually a seed. It's not a grain at all, so anyone who wants to stay away from grains, this is perfect for you. It's got almonds in it, which gives you that creamy texture in the cereal. So it's kind of a take on cream of wheat. It's my take on cream of wheat. So I'm going to get started and show you how easy this is to prepare. These are raw buckwheat groats. How many of you are familiar with kasha? Now, kasha is just a toasted buckwheat groat, and these are actually raw hulled buckwheat groats. There's three tablespoons, and you want to soak them for eight hours, and they pretty much double in size after you soak them. And after soaking, you want to drain and rinse them very well. They're very slimy after you soak them. You'll see the water just comes out really thick. So just keep rinsing and rinsing until it com- it's clear. So into the blender, all of this is going to go. We've got our soaked buckwheat groats. And I want to mention to you, too, these mason jars are so handy if you're a raw foodist. Because of all the soaking that you have to do of the seeds and the nuts, they're perfect for that. And you can get them anywhere, and they're not that expensive. This is a half cup of almonds, raw almonds, that have been soaked for eight hours. And the reason you want to soak the nuts before you eat them is nuts and seeds are dormant. They have an enzyme inhibitor that is not released until you soak them. And they become much more digestible once you soak them. Eight to twelve hours is usually how long you want to soak the almonds for. Then we have a cup of chopped and cored apple. You can use any apple you wish to use. I usually use Red Delicious, but I use Fuji and Gala apples for this recipe as well. And you just want to cut them, I don't know if you guys can all see this, but pretty small. You want to dice them. You want to help the blender out. You don't want to over-process this. If you over-process this, the buckwheat tends to get a little gritty in the cereal. And then we're going to add about 
between three quarters and a cup of water. I usually add the whole cup, but it's entirely up to you. We have a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And that is it. We're just going to blend this up until it's smooth and creamy. How many of you have a high-speed blender at home? They're pretty handy, aren't they? You can make just about anything in a high-speed blender. If you don't have a high-speed blender, you'll probably just have to blend this a little longer. But I'm going to go ahead and blend this up. And this is nice because a lot of people that go on a raw food diet think that they have to have fruit or smoothies for breakfast, and that's it. And that's not true. You can have things that are very hearty and very substantial that will get you through to lunch, or at least get you through to, you know, 10 o'clock. I have fruit at 8 o'clock in the morning, and by 8.45, I'm starving. So this is something that is definitely handy for a raw foodist. Jennifer, where did you buy the groats there, the buckwheat? Buckwheat groats are available at health food stores. <laughs> I haven't found any any place else. Usually when I find them at grocery stores, they're toasted, and you want to get the raw buckwheat groats. They're sold in bulk? Or? They're sold in bulk at the health food stores, yeah. And they're pretty inexpensive. I think they're like a dollar a pound. So they're, it's a very inexpensive recipe. And what I'm going to do really quick to show you is just dice up a little bit of banana. And the neat thing about this recipe is you soak it for eight hours. So you can put everything in the jars at night before you go to bed. The next morning when you're ready to have breakfast, it's ready. You just drain and rinse everything. And then we'll just go ahead and put some chopped banana and some crushed nuts. These are pecans. You can use almonds or walnuts, whichever you choose. But this is a pretty hearty breakfast. So there you have cream of buckwheat cereal. Yes. Are you soaking it in cold water, warm water, in the fridge, out of the fridge? You soak it at room temperature and you soak it in cold purified water. So there we have our buckwheat cereal. I think that took less than five minutes to make. The next thing I'm going to be preparing for you is a take on tuna salad. It's a raw take on tuna salad. And what we use for our tuna is actually soaked sunflower seeds and soaked walnuts. And these, uh, you only have to soak them for about four hours. If you don't have a high-speed blender, I would soak them for about eight hours. We have um, three-quarters of a cup of walnut and a quarter cup of sunflower seeds. And these do bulk up when you soak them, so you want to make sure you use a jar big enough. If you have a jar um, and you fill the nuts at the top, they're going to expand and you're not going to have enough room to let them expand. Just get my food processor out. When you make this, you don't want to overeat because of the, the nuts and the seeds. They're very heavy, so this isn't something I would eat every day. But I do eat something like this probably once a week. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put these in the food processor. And then we're going to add a quarter cup of water to this. And this will kind of help blend it a little bit, and it will smooth it out. For this recipe, it wouldn't process the, um, the seeds and the nuts in the blender as well. I've tried it in the blender. It does work, but you keep having to scrape them down and scrape them down. It works a lot better in the food processor, I've found. I'm going to go ahead and process this. You're going to process these until they're smooth, and if you need to add more water, you can. It just depends on the water content of the nuts and the seeds. 
will depend on how much water you need to add to this. And you can substitute almonds, you can substitute pecans, but this recipe, I use the walnuts and the sunflower seeds simply because of their color, their light color. You don't want it to come out too dark because then it won't look like tuna sauce. I'm going to add a little bit more water to this. There we go. And you want to process these so they're very smooth, very smooth shape. We're going to transfer this to a bowl, and basically, once you get these processed, you're just going to add a few minced ingredients and some spices, and what gives it the, the tuna-like flavor is the kelp powder. It gives it that uh, fishy flavor that everybody expects from a tuna salad. <laughs> if you give them a bunch of mashed up sunflower seeds and walnuts, they're going to say, this doesn't taste like tuna salad, this tastes like walnuts and sunflower seeds. So you want to add the things that you would typically add to a tuna salad. And you're just going to stir them all in. And it comes together so quickly. This is our uh, dried dill and sea salt. And the reason I use sea salt and everything is the anti-caking agents found in table salt you just want to stay away from. I don't see the point in putting them in your body. So I just use sea salt. And you can get that again in bulk at the health food store. This is a... I'm sorry? Kelp. The kelp powder also available in bulk, and I think it's pre-packaged in little containers at the health food store. Everything I'm making, um, shopping for this, all of these um, recipes, it was very difficult to find the ingredients at places other than a health food store. Of course, the vegetables and nuts and things like that you can find, but it's very hard to find even raw almonds. I had to go all over the place looking for them and found them at Long's of all places. Quarter cup of minced red onion, and when you're making anything, any raw food, and you're adding a pungent ingredient like garlic or onion, you want to make sure it's very small. You want to make a very small mint. When you're using garlic, you really want to crush it well. Nobody wants a big chunk of raw onion or raw garlic in anything. Normally with cooking, you know, you change the flavor and break it down a little bit, but with uncooking, you know, what you see is what you get, so you don't want a big chunk of anything, especially onion. Here we have a quarter cup of minced parsley, and again, it's minced very, very finely. A quarter cup of minced celery. And let me show you really quick before I forget. This is what the kelp powder looks like. Can everybody kind of see that on the screen? No? There we go. It's um, kind of a light greenish brown color. And um, it's very inexpensive. But you have about a tablespoon of that. And we've got our fresh squeezed lemon juice. And you just toss this up. And every time I make this, the recipe says to, to add two tablespoons of water is optional. But every time I've made it, if I don't add the two tablespoons of water... It lacks that creamy, it almost tastes like a little like sour cream when you add those two extra tablespoons of water. I don't know what it is about that extra water. So if everybody can see that, I mean, I think that considering there's no fish in here, it looks pretty close to tuna salad, don't you think? And the longer you let this set, it darkens up a little bit. So I would recommend if you're, sh if you're making this for people and you really want to make an impression with raw food, don't make it a day or two in advance. Make it that morning because it will darken. And then, you know, they might look at it and go, what is this you're trying to feed me? <laughs> you can either use this as a pate and just use um, maybe some chopped carrot, chopped celery, and use it as a dip at a buffet. Or you can do... Whoops, and do what I'm going to do. Just put a few scoops on some lettuce. And I think the nutritional information is on your recipe handouts. 
And you can see this is not a light dish. So you really, really want to, to use this sparingly. Don't have this every single day. So we just have a salad of chopped romaine. I usually use baby greens. It just looks nicer. And then just sprinkle on some chopped carrot. Or I'm sorry, some shredded carrot. And we have some parsley. And there you have a raw tuna salad. You guys can see that back there. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. And it tastes just like tuna, I promise. <laughs> Here you go. I don't know if you want to treat that later. Should we just display here? Sure. Okay. I'm going to give this to you also. Now the next thing I want to make for you is a cucumber bisque. And most people think of soup and they think of cold soup and they think, I don't want cold soup. And to some people, they think it's like a smoothie in a bowl. And technically, I guess it probably is, but it's savory, so I don't want to drink it out of a cup because I'm thinking something sweet, smoothie in a cup, something savory in a bowl. And this one is very simple to make, and it's perfect for summer. If anybody has anybody coming over for Easter, any family coming over for Easter brunch, and you want to kind of put out some raw food, I would recommend doing the tuna salad and then the bisque. It makes a very nice combination, and it's perfect for spring and summer. Yeah. The great thing about this cooking, there was no fat. It just rinsed out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm assisting a chef like you. <laughs> okay, the first thing we want to do is we have cashews, and that's going to be our base for the soup. That's going to give it a very creamy texture. These are raw cashews, and... Um, you're going to use a third of a cup. If you don't have a high-speed blender, soak these in the one cup of water at least an hour before you blend them. Because in a, if you don't have a high-speed blender, they don't puree the way they should. You really want to get a cream when you puree these. And I had these in the refrigerator, and it took quite a while on the batch I made earlier. And we're going to add a cup of water. And for those of you that are interested, before I start making noise with this thing, this is a K-Tech blender. This and Vitamix are the two best high-speed blenders out there. I have a Vitamix, but this one is also very nice, and I'll show you really quick. You can program it, so you can program different speeds on here. It's all digital. Pretty nice blender. They're not cheap, but they're definitely worth it. We're going to add the rest of our ingredients to the blender with the cream that I just made with the cashews. You can use almonds, you can use pine nuts, you can also leave the nuts out if you want to and just add a little bit more of the mashed avocado. Or you can just leave the recipe as it is and omit the cashews. You don't have to add nuts and it does take some of the fat out of the recipe. Really quick, I want to show you this neat trick. Some of you might have seen it, some of you may never have seen it. But to feed a cucumber, all you need is a spoon. And just run it really quick down. And there you have it. It's all nice and seeded for you. Let me just chop this up. And we're going to use four cups of seeded and chopped Japanese cucumber. And the reason I use Japanese cucumber is there's no wax on the skin. You can use regular cucumbers if you'd like. Just I would peel them first. Definitely peel them first. Does anybody have any questions while I'm adding everything to the blender? Yes. Um, do you use organic ingredients? I do. I do. I definitely use organic whenever it's possible. And it seems like a lot of these recipes, the fat content is quite high. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's how you add um, I don't eat everything that I'm making for you every day. Um, I'll eat maybe two or three of these a week. And I haven't gained weight. As a matter of fact, when I went on the raw food diet, 100% raw, I lost about 7 pounds. And I was eating more fat and more calories. But it was the whole food fats, I think, that I was eating that um, I guess my body knew what to do with them, opposed to processed fats. But, you know, I'm, I'm a chef and not a doctor, so I would definitely discuss that with your doctor. But for me, um, I 
I wanted to make these recipes for you so you could see that raw food wasn't about salads and carrots and fruit and things like that. You could actually have substantial hearty meals on a raw food diet. And just like any other diet, you don't want to indulge too much on these sorts of, of foods. A question in the back of the room? Sure. Uh, I've been uh, buying organic apples, mm -hmm. and I thought they didn't have the, uh, the wax coating on the outside of them, but they do. They do. Uh, is there a place where we can get organic apples without that wax coating on them? Once in a great while, I'll see some at either Umeki Market in Kahala, once in a great while, or at Down to Earth. But it seems like certain varieties have more wax than others. I've noticed with um, Ambrosias, and I think Fujis or Galas will usually have a lot of wax on them. But, you know, I would love to, to get no wax on my fruit. I don't... I think if it was supposed to have wax on it, it would grow that way. <laughs> and I don't care how pretty it is. I just want it to taste good. To get it off, I soak them in water that's heated to 150 degrees and melt the wax off. Oh, really? Yes. I don't have that much patience, especially with apples. I love apples. So, okay, here we have a half a teaspoon of fennel seed, a half a teaspoon of, I'm sorry, a quarter teaspoon of dill, and we have our sea salt, and we have a half a teaspoon of dried mint. You can get dried mint in bulk at the health food store. It's very inexpensive. If you don't use dried mint very often, I would just get recipe quantity. And actually, when I buy a small amount of these bulk herbs, they have to throw a penny on the scale because it won't register. So you end up paying about 10 cents to make this. So you can just throw all this stuff in. We've got our minced green onions. And... Because the, uh, the cucumbers are probably about 80 to 90% water, so they're going to puree pretty quickly. If we were to leave the green onions in bigger chunks, they wouldn't puree at the same speed as the cucumbers, so you might end up with chunks of onion in your soup. So that's why I minced it. Some people think, why do you mince it if you're going to put it in the blender? That doesn't make sense to do all that work when the blender is going to do it for you. But you want it to process evenly. And then our avocado, we're going to throw that in last. I can't wait for you guys to try this stuff. So excited. I get 85 opinions on raw food. <laughs> and I hope they're all good. I'm sure they will. Okay, I'm going to turn this loud thing on again. Is it really loud when I turn the blender on? Okay. That'll about do it. And to serve this, you can serve it either to four people in small appetizer dishes, or you can serve, you know, two people a pretty good lunch with this. This is kind of a big bowl, but that's okay. I'm sure somebody will be hungry later. If you process this for too long, you saw I probably did it for about, I don't know, 15 seconds. If you process it for very long, the avocado will start to turn the soup into like a mousse. So if you don't have a high-speed blender, I would blend everything first and then add the avocado last just until it's smooth. Because if you have to keep blending it, you're going to have very thick soup. Then you can add water, then you're going to have to add more seasonings, and you'll just have a mess. So I would just definitely, um, without a high-speed blender, put the avocado in last. And I'm just going to garnish this soup with some minced parsley, some green onion, and some sunflower seeds that I've crushed. Because I like a nice little crunch or something something else than just a smoothie in a bowl. Mm -hmm. And there you have... Can everybody see that? Cucumber bits. I think it's beautiful. I love the color, and I think it's perfect for Easter or for the spring or summer. It's a great dish to have. Gorgeous. There you go. Wow. So I think I've probably been at this 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and I've made three things already. Three dishes. A breakfast and two wonderful uh, lunch or light dinner um, dishes. And the next thing I'm going to be making for you is my favorite. It's uh, spring vegetables and my take on peanut sauce. And because peanuts are not actually a nut, 
they have to be cooked, so they're not considered raw. There are some raw peanuts out there. I don't particularly care for them, so I don't use them. But if you see them, give them a shot. So this is, I guess, an unstir fry. And what you'll find whenever you make anything with raw vegetables, you soak it in any kind of a marinade or dressing that's got salt or citrus in it. It's going to break the vegetables down. It'll slowly kind of cook them, kind of like ceviche. Are you guys familiar with ceviche? And uh, the lemon juice cooks the fish that's in the ceviche. And I think lomi lomi salmon is the same, the same way. So you'll get kind of a cooked texture with the vegetables. I'm going to move this out of the way really quick. This comes together so quickly. And the base of the sauce is almond butter. You can buy almond butter made, unsalted raw almond butter. It's at the health food store. I didn't find it in any of the grocery stores on the windward side of this island. I had to go to the health food store to get it. You can make your own almond butter. If you buy raw almonds, don't soak them. If you soak them, you'll be whirling your food processor for two days and you still won't get almond butter. But if you want to make your own, you can. And I think it's a little less expensive than buying it because buying raw almond butter unsalted is about $15 a jar. And I don't want to spend that much money on a jar of anything. So if you want to make your own, just get raw almonds, put them in the food processor, and let them go for about 10 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes will usually do it, and you'll have your own almond butter. The longer you do it, the, lo the more it breaks the oils down, and it'll get kind of a glossy sheen to it. I like to stop it before it gets to that point. I don't like to over-process it too much and get it too oily. But it's entirely up to, to you and how you like to do it. But you can get them at um, you know, wholesale markets, the big bag of almonds, for a lot cheaper than you can get them at a health food store or a grocery store. Jennifer, how about the one that, that you can self-grind it down to earth? Is that raw? Or That's those not roasted? raw. Those are those roasted. Are roasted. Okay. I've made my own take on roasted almond butter by soaking and dehydrating the almonds, which is probably the best way to do it. But by not soaking these, that's fine. You're processing them to, to a, such a smooth texture, it's not going to impair your digestion. So it's okay to not soak these if you're going to be making almond butter with them. But um, if you have a dehydrator at home, you can soak the almonds for about 8 to 12 hours and then dehydrate them for probably 24 to 48 hours at 105 degrees, and you'll kind of get a roasted almond when you do that. Okay, I have my zucchini, and you're going to use about three medium zucchini. will give you about four cups. I've prepped some of it, and I just wanted to show you really quick. Can you guys see everything okay? You just want to quarter this and cut it into chunks. And you can cut them uh, as big or as small as you want. And because zucchini has such a high water content, once you add the sauce, it's going to start to break down quite a bit. So you want to do it um, right before you're going to serve it. You want to let it sit for 15 minutes once it's done and um, serve it right away. If you do it overnight in the refrigerator, your vegetables are going to be buried under water the next day. So we have our four cups of zucchini. We've got a cup of shredded carrots. And I shred them because julienning takes too long. You guys familiar with that technique, julienne? They're like little matchsticks. I did it like that the first couple of times because it just it looks pretty and it looks like a stir fry. But I just don't want to take the time to do it, so I just put it in the uh, food processor with the shredding attachment, or you can just use a handheld grater. Then we have our celery bias sliced, or cut at a 45 degree angle. Most of you know when you eat any kind of stir fry, it's cut this way. It's not just sliced. Um, and if those of you who have never seen that technique before, I just want to show you really quick. You want to take your piece of celery and just do it at an angle and you just slice it. And you want to slice it pretty thin because you're not cooking this 
so you don't want big chunks of celery. So we're going to toss that in there. And then we have four green onions that I thinly sliced. And I know I said it before, but I'll say it again. You don't want big pieces of onion, so make sure you cut these very thin. Okay, those are our vegetables. Now we're going to make our sauce. It's pretty simple. We've got wheat-free tamari. Tamari is soy sauce, basically. And you want to get the wheat-free. Also, if you want to reduce the sodium in the recipe, you're more than welcome to use low-sodium um, tamari or soy sauce. If you don't have a problem with wheat, go ahead and just use regular soy sauce. When I make food for a group of people, I always use something wheat-free because so many people have an intolerance or a sensitivity to wheat. And technically, soy sauce, the soybeans are cooked, so this isn't technically a raw food. But when it comes to seasonings, usually most people in the raw food community will use soy sauce. They'll use, you know, dried onion or dried um, garlic powder, even though that's not technically raw either. It's been heated to very high temperatures. It's all a matter of seasoning. It's not the main course. You just want to add flavor to something, so you're, it's okay to use this. If you want to be a pure raw foodist, you don't have to use this. Um, but for flavoring, most raw food people will use things like this. We're going to add that to the blender with the ginger, the garlic powder, the lemon juice, and the agave nectar. How many of you are familiar with agave nectar? Not too many. Let me show you. Actually, I'll show you both of these. This is the organic tamari. I like it because this brand makes organic and it's wheat free. And again, health food store. I can't find this any place else besides a health food store. So that's what this looks like. If anybody wants to take a look at it for future reference, agave nectar is actually from cactus. And it's perfect because it's vegan. And as you know, most vegans don't eat honey. And the raw food diet is based on a vegan diet. And honey is, of course, a product of beef labor, so most people won't eat honey if they're on a raw food diet. So I just want to show you this. It's actually, I like using this more than honey because it doesn't add any kind of flavor. As you know, honeys will add whatever that honey tastes like to your dish. This is just a sweetener, and it has a lower glycemic index than honey, so it's suitable for diabetics. That's what the package says. I'm not a doctor. I'm just saying what the package says. So um, I'm going to leave that here. Also, if anybody wants to come up and take a look at it, it comes in light and dark. And here's our almond butter. We've got three quarters of a cup. And if I could just get the rest of this out. together pretty quickly. And that's it. So we've got our water, our soy sauce, our almond butter, ginger, garlic. Did I leave anything out? Agave nectar. And basically that's your sauce. It looks to me and just like um, peanut sauce. And it, I think it tastes better than peanut sauce. And you guys will get a chance to try it. You're just going to pour this over the vegetables and you want to marinate it for about 15 minutes to let the flavors kind of get in the vegetables and soften the vegetables up a little. <coughs> um, 15 minutes to an hour. I wouldn't do it longer than an hour, definitely. So we're just going to give this a quick toss. I love this stuff. If I had a fork and you guys weren't here, <laughs> this bowl would be empty in about 15 minutes. I'd feel sick later, but I'd be happy. So I just want to show you a really uh, easy way that you can uh, plate this. We'll pretend that 15 minutes went by. And then you just put this on the mung bean sprouts. Do it on a platter, or you can do this on individual serving plates four dinner plates, add about a cup of the bean sprouts, oh, 
Oh, this smells so good. It's making me hungry. I eat dinner at like 4 o'clock, so it's time for me to start grazing again. <laughs> okay, go. And then here we just have some minced cilantro. And if you like spicy food, I usually add cayenne pepper to this recipe when I'm making the sauce. And you want to add about an eighth of a teaspoon to a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper if you like it spicy. I didn't add cayenne pepper to this because there's 85 of you, and chances are there's some of you out there that just don't like spicy food. Or it doesn't like you. So there's our minced cilantro. And we have some crushed almonds. And there you have spring vegetables in Thai almond sauce. Yum. There you have it. Okay, one more demonstration for you that I have. Something sweet, something that everybody loves is candy, or energy nuggets as I like to call them, because then it makes it sound like you're eating something healthy. But it's actually a raw candy. Are you guys getting hungry for some raw food? Plus, it's not helping that you can smell it over there. This is perfect for anybody that can't have chocolate also. Yes? How much the prep time? I know it doesn't take long to put them together, but it seems like the prep time on all of these is pretty long. Yesterday, I prepped everything for 85 people by myself, and it took me washing dishes and everything about five hours. And that's five recipes for 85 people plus all of the prep work for the, the demo trays. So it was actually about four or five recipes per recipe. So um, I was in here chopping away yesterday, but um, it doesn't actually take too long. What I like about it is when you prep raw food, you can eat it. You don't have to stick it in the oven for 45 minutes. You don't have to stir fry it or do anything to it. You don't have to wait for water to boil. Um, when you prep it, it's done. It's ready to go. And that's my favorite part. Cleanup is easy. That's my favorite. Well, yesterday, I had a lot of dishes. I don't know about that. <laughs> but, you know, you're not always making food for 85 people either. So keep that in mind. This is perfect if you love chocolate, but you can't have chocolate. It's carob powder. And some people aren't really big fans of carob powder. They think, oh, it doesn't taste like chocolate. But it's actually, I think it tastes pretty close to chocolate. Okay, I'm going to tell you really quick before I forget, very important. Carob powder, health food store, again, is where you want to buy it. It's not sold in bulk. It's sold in 16-ounce bags. It's about $3.50, and it lasts me quite a while. I just keep it in the refrigerator. So it's, it's definitely well worth it if you like to make sweets, and um, it's very versatile. But you want to put it in the food processor first. If you put it in last, you're just going to have an explosion of brown powder in the food processor. And even though the lid's on... It comes out, and it goes everywhere. So be warned, because I learned my lesson a couple times. And I wasn't wearing a dark shirt at the time. <laughs> and I think I had it in my hair and on my face. Now, uh, with dates, you want to make sure you get pitted dates, and you want to have them at room temperature. They process a lot easier. And because these are usually machine process, meaning the dates are de-pitted, if you will, with a machine. I don't trust the machine, and this has happened before. You just want to quickly run your knife through the dates, just cut them in half. I don't think that's on your recipe card, but just remember, because if you have a date with a pit in it in your food processor, you're going to have to buy a new food processor bowl, because the, the pit gets stuck in there between the blade and the food processor bowl, and it's just a disaster. And it doesn't sound very nice either. Okay. We're going to put the dates in next. We've got a cup of pitted dates. A cup of pecans. Pecans do not need to be soaked. You can just put them in dry. They're raw pecans. No salt. And a cup Costco. Costco, yeah. That's the 
probably the most inexpensive place to find, even the pecans, too. Pecans and um, actually all the nuts. If they have them, it's going to be cheaper. Costco's also starting to stock a lot more organic stuff. Yes. I haven't been in there in a really long time, but um, that's great to know that because it's definitely an expensive habit. I'm in the produce section of Down to Earth just about every day. What did you have? Oh, I'm sorry. That was unsweetened shredded coconut. And it's organic as well. And they also sell that in bulk. So it's pretty an inexpensive recipe. All of these are inexpensive if you buy the ingredients in bulk just for the recipe you're making. It doesn't cost that much. It's, people think that because it's all produce, it's going to be a very expensive diet or a very expensive way to live. And it's really not. I spend probably... About the same, maybe a little less than when I was vegan. And I haven't bought meat in so long that I couldn't even tell you a compar comparison on that. Now all we're going to do is process this down. And I'll show you what it's going to look like in a minute here. Okay, when it gets broken down to this consistency, it's usually pretty, pretty good, pretty good to go. The only thing you want to check is when you squeeze it, you want to make sure that it holds because if it doesn't hold in here, it's not going to hold when you press it in the pan. And this looks pretty good. If you process it too long, it's going to get really oily, and you don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead, press this in a plastic lined pan, and the reason you want to line it in plastic is this is going to be your handles to get this out when it sets. If you don't put it in plastic, your bars won't come out very well at all. I'm just going to go ahead and pour all this in. If you don't want to make these into bars, you don't have to. You can use a melon baller and make little candies out of them. I've done that before. So just kind of play with this. It's kind of like if you're playing with potting soil, actually. <laughs> but just kind of evenly with your fingertips before you start pressing. Because once you start pressing... That's the way it's going to come out. And you don't want a big stack on this side and that much on this side. So we've got that pretty even. And if you've got big hands and you have trouble doing this in the corners, you can use the back of a measuring spoon, or measuring cup rather, to press it in there. So we're just going to press that until it sets. You get the idea. Cover it and put it in the refrigerator for at least an hour. I would put it in longer. Usually I refrigerate it overnight. If I eat this right away, it, for some reason it tastes better the next day. I don't know why, it just does. So try it both ways, but you'll see that this is a very addicting um, habit. So I usually don't have the ingredients to make it in the house because once I make it, <laughs> I eat it like it's going out of style. So there you have it. And that, my friends, is five raw recipes in, I don't know, 45 minutes probably. And all the prep work probably wouldn't take you more than an hour. So I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. And I hope that you will all give raw food a shot. And I hope you enjoy it too. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have any questions? No? You guys just want to eat. <laughs> When do you choose to use a blender? When do you choose to use a food process? Whenever I'm making anything that's a lot of liquid, I use the blender. If you use the food processor, you can use it, but it, it tends to kind of start oozing out the sides. Whenever I make anything that's a, a nut based, like this this recipe right here in the blender, it wouldn't blend evenly. It's not enough blending space to get it all incorporated. You'll have kind of like a lump of date and nut mess at the bottom and then hold things up at the top. It just doesn't work well. So I would definitely use the equipment that's recommended in the recipe. Once you soak your nuts, do they last indefinitely? Or no. Once you soak them, that's a good question. Thank you for asking that. Once you soak them, I would use them within three to four days at the most. Can Probably three would be the best. Can you put them in the freezer after you soak them? Or should you just um, no, I wouldn't. I would just use them right away. So if it's three to four days, can it 
go in the refrigerator or should it stay at room temperature? It should be in the refrigerator. Once you soak and drain and rinse, make sure you rinse them very well also. Um, put them in the refrigerator until you're ready to use them. And again, like three days. But I think hazelnuts, almonds, um, those you definitely want to soak. Brazil nuts you want to soak. Things you don't have to soak are pine nuts, cashews. Those aren't going to sprout. Um, the reason for soaking, and if you soak almonds um, for about 12 hours, you'll see a little tiny nub kind of start to come out. It's very hard to see, but they're actually sprouting, so they're living foods. You've kind of brought them back to life by soaking them in water. So they're, they're just dormant um, when they're dry. And that's why people have such a hard time digesting raw nuts. Um, if you soak them, they're, they're much easier to digest. I have another question. Sure. For wild rice, I tried soaking it, and it was so smelly and so starchy. Is that normal? No. That might have been old wild rice, because I've made a wild rice dish like that, and you soak it for, I think I soaked it for about 24 hours, mm -hmm. and then drain it and rinse it, mm -hmm. and then leave it in the refrigerator and let it kind of bloom, let it blossom. It'll kind of open up. And you'll see, when you cook wild rice, you see how it turns kind of white and it kind of opens up? The same thing happens when you drain it, rinse it, and put it in the refrigerator. It'll kind of start to sprout or blossom. But, yeah, that was probably not a very good batch. The question was, do, do you use the soaking water? No. You would definitely discard the soaking water. Anybody else have a raw food question? Sprouts? Like alfalfa sprouts? Do I buy my own seeds and sprout them? No, I don't usually. And the only reason why, and this is terrible to say, but the only reason why is I'm too impatient. I don't want to, I just don't want to mess with it, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. And I have a very small kitchen working space, and I don't have a lot of sprouting space. You need a lot of jars. And for those of you interested in sprouting, most raw food cookbooks have a chapter on how to sprout your own. And if you have the space and you really want to do it, it's a great way to have viable living foods available to you if you sprout your own. And I know health food stores have the sprouting seeds, and they have the sprouting jars also. But I have done it, and it, it's it's nice to watch them grow, but, you know, I just don't, I don't want to wait. I just want to make my salad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. But a raw food diet, how are you determining what amount of protein and calcium and whatever nutrients you're getting because it's, it's not like collapses a steak or something. How would you determine that you're having a balanced diet and the amount that you could need? Honestly, I just go by how I feel. If I eat too many nuts and seeds, I know it because I feel lethargic and it's just too much fat or too much protein. And, and to be honest with you, if I eat too much protein, I get a headache. And um, I just... I just go by how I feel, and, um, you know, that's, that's really all I can say about it. I feel better now than I did when I was in high school, eating tortillas and Spam Musubi and Zippies and McDonald's and all that sort of food. And even when I was a vegan, uh, I was vegan last year, um, beginning part of the year, and pretty much the only cooked food I was eating was rice and oatmeal. And when I went 100% raw, I felt more alive. I felt more energetic than just by taking brown rice and oatmeal out of my diet. So I just am going by how I feel. And to be honest, you know, if a couple years down the road, I feel a craving, an immense craving for a bowl of steamed brown rice, I'll probably eat it. Because if I'm craving it, maybe my body's asking me for something. But health-wise, I do go to the doctor and, and get checkups and everything's normal. What, what's a typical day then? A you know, typical they, day? The, the question came up, you said these are a little richer than, mm -hmm. than you know, you normally eat. So what's a typical day for you? How, how do you kind of balance out your day? My typical day is I will probably have a fruit smoothie with some spirulina in the morning, and then I'll have a handful of walnuts or almonds or something like that. For lunch, I'll usually make wraps or sushi. Those are my favorite. I, just, I eat them all the time because I like them so much. I make wraps using collard green leaves, which some people don't care for raw collard leaves. I love them. I take the big, thick stem out of the center and just use them as you would normally use um, wrap a tortilla. And I use um, avocado, which is very, you know, filling and has fat in it, um, sprouts, shredded carrots, shredded beets, raw beets. I'll make a wrap with that. 
Um, for dinner, I'll usually have a salad that's like this. <laughs> it's got every vegetable imaginable in it. Um, I usually will take raw spinach, raw kale, and um, shredded vegetables, red cabbage. I make a dressing out of tahini or out of um, tomatoes. I make tons of different types of dressing, but um, that's usually what I eat. I, that's what I like. But once in a while I get a craving and I make like a refried bean tasting pate out of sunflower seeds that taste just like refried beans, and I'll make a burrito. And that's pretty heavy. So it's just kind of what I'm craving, what I feel like eating. The, yes. the fact that she has all those greens in her diet says a lot, um, you know, from a nutritionist standpoint, because they're just packed with vitamins and minerals and protein and fiber and calcium. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a powerhouse from the greens, and then when you, you know, add the nuts and things. So, right. so she, uh, you know, I was surprised when we analyzed the recipes that they're, they're very nutrient dense. And, you know, to be honest with you, I, I, I'm pretty active. I jog. I go walking up to Makapu Point uh, three or four times a week. So, you know, this diet keeps me full, and I love to eat. Anybody that knows me will tell you that I'm constantly eating something. And it's, you know, I've, I made these a couple weeks ago, and I ate half of it in a day. And when I develop these recipes, every recipe that you see in a matter of about two and a half days, I ate all of it myself. And I didn't gain weight. And I was expecting to because I kept checking the scale <coughs> every day. And I didn't. And, um, you know, when I was eating a cooked vegan kind of cooked diet, I did way more. So for me, it worked. The question was what made me go 100% raw from vegan diet? Actually, I learned about the raw food diet when I was at Barnes & Noble, looking through cookbooks, and I saw this cookbook on raw food. I said, wow, that's kind of interesting. So I started reading it and thought, you know, this is kind of interesting. And a friend of mine found out about the school. And I went up to Living Light Culinary Arts Institute in Northern California. And after I saw how what you could do with these vegetables and seeds, I hardly ever ate seeds and nuts before. And... Um, I thought it was amazing, and I just love the food. I just really love the food, and I like the way my body felt when I changed the diet. After about a month, I noticed a huge difference. So that's actually what made me change, is, is just the food. Yes, sir? How do you handle going out to restaurants with friends? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I order a big salad with olive oil and lemon on the side, yeah. and that's okay, about it. It's, it's really hard. Fortunately, I love to be in the kitchen, and I love to cook. So, um, you know, I don't go out to restaurants too often, but when I do, I do get salads. And my instructor, actually, at school, she would usually find a salad she liked and ask them to put it in a blender for her. <laughs> and they would look at her like she was from another planet, but they would do it. It didn't you look need very to start good. Your own, uh, <laughs> I know, I keep hearing that, and I'm hoping that somebody who comes to one of my classes would be so inspired to open a raw food restaurant that I'll have some place to eat besides my own kitchen. <laughs> so I'll come and I'll bring people, I promise. <laughs> yeah. This is um, directed to Mary. From a dietitian standpoint, what do you think of a raw food? Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I might be concerned with the, like I said, the fat. So, I mean, you would obviously recommend this to somebody who was already had health problems? Or we, Jennifer and I were talking about this, and you would not You would be eating, like, big salads and things, and this would just be the, the things that she's prepared are condiments to a, a, a diet based on fresh fruits and vegetables, right? Right. Yeah. So, so in a meal time, that's why I wanted her to mention what she eats in a day's time. So I, I think I will analyze, you know, your your diet sometime. But um, from the recipes, it seems very nutrient dense. Some people don't digest raw foods as well. You know, that's not there is older people. Some people just maybe don't. And and that's. But I think anybody can benefit by going more towards. Definitely more towards a plant-based diet, and definitely more toward you know adding maybe 50% of your food raw. You know maybe it's maybe you don't see yourself going all the way, but certainly going steps towards that way. And everything that she prepared, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm anxious to try it. I haven't tried it, but nutritionally, 
from what I saw analyzing, I, I'm still learning about this too, but I, I didn't see, especially if you include all those leafy greens like you were talking about, very nutrient dense. Mm-hmm. There's then, a lot more protein in green leafy and greens, greens and, and, and calcium. Mm-hmm. And yeah. calcium, yeah. Mm-hmm. But for some foods, don't you need to cook it in order to release some of the, the nutrients? You're thinking like lycopene and tomatoes and things. and True. true. I've heard that mm-hmm. before too. Mm-hmm. But then she's, you know, she's having other red fruits and things like that, so. Mm-hmm. She looks pretty healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank sure. you. Jennifer, you didn't mention the, the magic 120 degree business about what happens to the food when you heat it beyond, what, 118 or something like that? Um, the question is how hot or how much can you heat foods before they start to kind of lose their enzymatic activity or quote-unquote die off. Um, I've heard a lot of debate on it. Some people say 95 degrees. Some people say you can go up to 145 and then slowly reduce the temperature. Um, 118 is about it. But you have to remember if you have a dehydrator and you're making something very dense or that has a lot of water in it, you're going to want to crank the temperature up, especially here in Hawaii when we're having our lovely humid weather in September and October. You don't want to just put it on 105 and expect it to dehydrate normally. You have to think about water content and density. So you can crank it up to 125, 130 for about an hour to get some of that initial moisture out, then reduce the temperature to about 105 to 115 is how I dehydrate everything. And that's here, living here. Before you leave, I just want to thank everybody for coming out to this cooking demonstration. I know you're all anxious to try the food. I hope you'll look through your handouts and come again. Thank you so much. This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and helpful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org.